And uh, there is something I usually, every time I say it, uh, people get surprised. I don't believe in best practices because whatever you work for you, it, it might not work for me. Welcome to Process Pioneers, the show that takes a deep dive into the minds of decision makers, key influencers, and process experts who are pioneering the world of everything process. Welcome to another episode of Process Pioneers. My name is Daniel Rayner. I'm the host of Process Pioneers. And in each of these episodes, like I um, say every time, but I get to sit down with different BPM practitioners that are not only learning about BPM in theory, they're putting it into practice, into real organizations, and they're, um, they're putting it into practice in order to see real value delivered for their organization, whether that is um, managing their processes, improving their processes, looking for opportunities, looking for pain points or problems. Um, and today I have the absolute privilege of sitting down with Ryan al Harbi. Now, Ryan is the head of processes and excellence at Saudi Authority for Intellectual Property. I uh, was just having a bit of a chat before we got started here and Ryan was saying, you know, he's, he's been able to learn from some of the best. He's been able to sit in front of Marcello La Rosa, Michael Roseman, Roger Tregear, um, and learn from these guys that are, that are really pioneering the BPM space. So I'm really interested to um, to learn from Ryan today. Ryan, thanks for joining me. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. So what we might do to begin with is if you can take us back to the first time or, or when, I guess, process first piqued your interest, when BPM was first introduced to you, and then take us on a journey leading up to today. Okay, I will go back to uh, where when I was studying by my master. Yep. So I've done both my bachelor and master in acuity uh, in Australia, Brisbane. And uh, usually I have a way of uh, putting subjects or units uh, or studying these through the semester. Uh, one of the semesters I have taken more uh, hard uh, units and uh, usually I take more units. So for my first week, I, I decide whether I take them all or just take out, mm -hmm. whether it's like difficult or easy. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was with my friends and I asked them about the units that they are taking and I've read the list and um, they said uh, one of the units was uh, business process management. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, one of my friends said that it's really difficult don't take it this semester <laughs> because he knows that I, I was taking a lot of uh, hard units that uh, that semester. Right. So I started for with uh, I add the unit in a way, I register for it, and uh, for my first week I met Michael Rosman, and uh, I was mind blown after my first class. Surprisingly, again, I I actually cancelled that or dropped that unit as soon as like like a few days after that. Yeah. And the reason why, because I had, I want to learn more and that semester was really hectic. And I, so I take it for the next semester. I'm yes. actually talking uh, like a unit called business process modeling and business yep. process improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing made me that uh, mind blown about business process management was because this is the way of thinking. That's, this is how I think. I usually put whatever I want to do in process if I'm not do doing it. So I usually get lost. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> That's great. And so you would say yeah. that BPM um, is very much a mindset thing. It's a way that you view the world. You, you, you naturally look at for the process and you naturally identify how can we improve this? Of course, yes. Uh, even like as simple as going to the store, usually if you are a business process expert, usually you just find gaps in the way they work. I, I have done actually, um, like one day I went to a store and I, there was a big gap in the, in the way. And I just pointed out and told them that you need to fix it. And then I went out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and in the organizations that you've worked in, um, doing BPM, uh, what, what is one of the biggest challenges you see, or whether it's one that you've worked at or whether it's um, another organization, but what's one of the biggest challenges you've seen an organization face when trying to adopt 
business process management? Okay. Um, usually the culture. Uh, okay. The your colleague doesn't know uh, what you are doing, and you try to explain it by actions, not words. I mm -hmm. usually uh, I get that uh, like uh, I get people resist to work with the process uh, for a while until they see impact. Yes. Uh, one of the good things, other than impact, is uh, introduce yourself, talk about right. the process more often, and uh, like let them know the benefits that they will get uh, in order to uh, get the process like or if they work with you in improving their processes. Yes, yeah, that's a great point. I think it's it's really important to bring those people along for the journey and, and include them in the process work because um, they're the ones that are carrying out those tasks and activities. So they probably are the best people to identify the pain points and the problems and how it can improve. Exactly. Yes. That's great. And in the, again, in the work that you've seen or you've been part of, um, what are some of the, what's one of the biggest wins that you've seen, I guess, BPM achieve? I think, you know, when, when an organ, before an organization adopts BPM, uh, they're going to, they're going to have a few questions like, well, what's the return on investment and where's the value in this? And what am I, what are we going to get out of it? Um, we don't want to just do work for work's sake. We actually want um, the work that we do to align with our strategies. So do you have any examples of um, a, a big win where an organization has implemented BPM and they've received a lot of value from that? Okay. Um, let's see, let me go back a bit. Like I remember mm. I've taken, uh, after my studies, uh, just to be refreshed, I usually take like uh, training courses in mm -hmm. business process management. Yep. One of them, uh, it was from QUT as well, and uh, they put it in one word, which was transparency. Right. So it's actually solved the ambiguity in uh, between department and the overlaps. And uh, usually, uh, if you work alone in, in your closed doors, then you will not achieve anything. But mm. every work that you have done is usually involve other departments. Mm. Uh, I will give you a story, like a quick one. Uh, I remember one department was working uh, with the emails of an organization mm -hmm. and they received thousands of emails that they complaining about uh, certain things anyway. Right. And uh, they can't actually solve it because they don't know the process they don't know right. the other the the actual department that they solve these things right so they called us as uh, business process experts and we sat with them and uh, we actually identify all the departments we improved that process yeah we actually improved we took the an extra mile like uh, we we took the uh, these complaints and made the vendor who actually the complaints was against to solve them under our supervision. And that actually uh, reduced and the number of complaints, even the walking people like the, if you want to uh, submit your complaints, usually you have to come and put it in writing, yes. not anymore after we uh, improve that process. And uh, actually the, the uh, we, we actually reduced the number, but I think it was uh, more than 40% of the complaints. Wow, that's amazing. That's yeah. huge. And, and what, does, what does looking for a process or understanding a process, walk us through that journey? Because I think I'd imagine that you would be bringing um, multiple people into a room. You'd be trying to understand, well, what is actually happening? And potentially there's space for um, disagreement there where it's one person's like, mm -hmm. oh, I do the process this way. Another person's like, I do it this way. So walk us through what does that look like? Um, understanding, well, what is actually going on? Okay, um, usually the most important thing of the process is understanding. Let everybody to, to agree in the process. Like uh, I remember one time I gather like all the stakeholders, some of them from the same departments, but we realized that everyone working in the, uh, in the process differently. Like some of them add few things and some of them take out few things. <laughs> so our job now, it's actually to smoothing, like smoothing the process. Uh, 
I uh, like unified the the way of work and make them all understand. Uh, of course, usually there will be uh, people agreeing and disagreeing um, in the table, mm -hmm. but as soon as you have a, a great facilitator uh, to facilitate that uh, workshop, usually mm -hmm. we'll get an agreement. Yes, yes, that's good. And um, how um, how difficult is it to empower um, the the process practitioners or the frontline em employees? How um, I know you mentioned earlier, it's a cultural thing. Like you you need to bring people along for the journey. But um, how difficult is it to empower these people to be able to identify? Um, well, we could be doing this process better and, and this is how we could be doing it better. Because I, I think some people might just fall into that, um, fall into the routine of just doing the same job every day for the last two, three, five years without actually looking for, well, how can we make this better? So how do you do, how do, you do that? Okay. Um, other than talking to people and make them realize how important um, proving the process or changing the process is, Usually we go with uh, governing the process right. and we to, to understand, uh, like to make them understand the how they can change this process. Uh, as soon as they see their KPI and the, the way it goes up and down, they will know, they will know exactly that like, you know what you are doing. Like usually when we work with, uh, uh, different people uh, governing their processes. We take their KPIs, the current KPIs and the target KPIs and what the action need to be done in order for you to uh, shift from the current to the future. Right. And as soon as they see the, the change in their KPIs going up or down or like to the good, to, the, to their target in a way, uh, they will realize right away that's, we are in the right track. So yes. the, ne, now they will, they will start to understand and listen to you more and ask you, ask you to change their process. Yes, okay, okay. Because you've proven value in the work that you're doing. Exactly, yes. Yeah, that's right. That's great. And um, speaking, like obviously that's relating to the process practitioners, the ones that, that are carrying out the process, but... Um, let's just say that there's probably going to be people that are watching our, or listening to our conversation that are from organisations where um, they they don't have um, that buy-in or that sponsorship to BPM. Um, even in some organisations of, of, you know, thousands of employees and there's one person that's been asked to understand and manage the process but it really hasn't, it's not, it's really hasn't been um, adopted by the organization. How does that one, how does that person approach the executive team to get that sponsorship? Um, what, what is the, the senior leadership? What, what sort of things do they want to hear? What do they need to hear? And how do you get that buy-in to something like BPM? Okay. Uh, usually if we think uh, we need to go to uh, like, uh, to, uh, to the uh, top management and uh, explain what we like, with, what's the value of the process. Usually we think big, actually it's simple. You just show them the impact and mm -hmm. show them, not tell them. Right. I, I, like, because if you tell them, they will think like everybody, if you tell them that I, I will help you and I can't do this and that, usually they will think, okay, Good luck. Yes. But if you talk, tell them that I got this, I have done that, they will actually right away, they will change. They will support you and they will ask you to show them more. Right. So show them. <laughs> yes. That's great. That's amazing. And I think, you know, I have heard that before where, um, they, they struggled to get that buy-in from senior leadership. So what they did or what this person did was they, they just bought BPM into their project. Um, on a simple project, on a small project, they understood their processes in this project, they improved their processes that, and they made sure that that project was a success. And then once they proved that value, the, the wider business unit noticed that, wow, that that project was a great success. We need to adopt BPM as a business unit. And then as the, B, the business unit adopted BPM, the department 
noticed, took notice and was like, wow, that's working really well. And then before you know it, um, the, the executive level, they're seeing how well this department's performing. And then they said, right, we need to, we need BPM um, to be across the organization uh, as, a, as a form of management because it is really effective and it is delivering value. So I think if you, yeah, if you do sm start small and can prove that value, um, that's a, a great way to begin. Exactly. Yes. And one more thing, usually, even if you have a unit and you have a team, usually uh, don't stop and only document improve process, Pro improve your own way of work, like right. uh, get the value out of a process. The process is not only improving the way of work, but even linking to different things like link your process to the uh, organization structure, right. link your process to your strategic objectives. Mm. Usually if you link them, people will see value. Yes. So, you know, but one, one of the things is uh, everyone working toward the uh, organization objectives. So if they don't see the linkage, you will fall, uh, fall out. So, yes, yeah. yes, right, right. So, and I think that's a great point. So linking processes to the, the overall strategy, because that's where everyone's attention is. And so if it's not delivering value to the overall strategy, then it won't be given any attention. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, that's great. That's really good. And um, talking about, you know, the, the people that are listening, that maybe they're from an organization where um, BPM hasn't been adopted. Well, what are some objections they might face um, when trying to introduce uh, BPM, even if it is on a very small level, on a project level, what are some objections they might face and, and how should they handle those objections? Okay. Uh, one of them is uh, we don't have time. Yep. Like, even if they understand a bit of the process, mm -hmm. uh, they will s still continue saying that we don't have time. However, uh, if you are like working with them and uh, according to their time, don't take long time from their time, just take an hour, half an hour mm -hmm. uh, to, to show them the value. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is... Uh, we need something that save us like, let's say money or cost or yeah, or whatever. So uh, still, if, as soon as you show them that uh, right away, it will be, it will change. Yeah. Uh, I remember one of the uh, organizations I work on, I was uh, a BA at, at that time. And I've been told that uh, we see you as like, we need you to deliver something that give us income. And they, if you improve the process, usually not all the time that you can see the, the effect right away, but so they didn't see it. Uh, I've done a study of, I took one or two processes. It was actually on my own time. And then I gave them the value. I showed them the value. I got the, the buy-in from uh, different people. I worked with them. Like uh, we worked together. We, uh, actually, my manager didn't know that. But after that, I showed them the, the re I showed him the result. Then he right away just changed. And he asked me to do, uh, teach my colleagues and how to improve and document processes. Yeah. Yes, yes, great, great. And when looking at improving processes um, or, or creating new processes, and I think that that is a balance um, that organizations have to manage is um, when, how, when are we going to improve our existing processes? How, when are we going to, how are we going to tweak our existing processes? And when are we going to uh, uh, create uh, or innovate and create entirely new processes that we weren't doing before. Um, but there's an opportunity here. It's an opportunity to be uh, competitive in the marketplace or it, there's an opportunity to create the future and, and create a new way of delivering value. How, how, do you, how does an organization go about, I guess, balancing between working on the, the existing processes and then spending time creating the future, so to speak. Okay. Uh, usually what I do, uh, as you're working in your current process, uh, I usually ask, please don't stop until we like get 
like get all the evidence that uh, of of that the the uh, the improved process that will work. Mm-hmm. And as soon as we got all the evidence after the workshops, uh, we analyzed the process. Uh, we get the uh, improvements uh, projects done. We worked with them in order to deliver these projects. Mm-hmm. Then, like a bit by bit, you just need to change. Uh, I need to like uh, uh, say the opposite thing. Sometimes you just need to stop your current process. Uh, sorry, I, I, you need just to stop your current process and go to the next process. It's, it depends on the process actually. However, mm-hmm. if you go uh, gradually uh, after like uh, implementing the improved improvement proce- uh, project, mm-hmm. then you're good to go. Yeah. 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 That's great. And um, just talking about um, the future of business process management. Um, so obviously over the last 10, uh, 10 15 years or so, uh, technology has been huge. Uh, technology has meant that organizations have had to um, adapt and change because, um, you know, technology has allowed um, startup businesses to really disrupt entire industries because a startup business comes into an industry uh, with a new way of thinking, a new way of going about delivering that value and and they can completely disrupt um, entire industries, um, what it feels like overnight, but obviously it's a a lot longer than that. Um, But looking at the future of BPM um, in particular over the next two, three, five years, where do you think organizations should be spending their time, investing their money, redeploying their resources um, to, to, I guess, keep up with the future of BPM and, and what's now required? Okay. Um, uh, before actually we started this uh, interview, we were talking about the two different subjects that I told you. I'm actually researching, which is what it was, the RPA and process mining. Yes. And I think they already started on uh, these for now. And I've seen some results in different companies on the uh, who they uh, implement the RPA in their processes, as well as the uh, process mining. And you can see how crazy the result is. And yes. uh, you can see usually the RPA doing a lot of work that's been done uh, and taken longer time. And also the process mining, you just by click, you can find the issue with your process. Yes. So actually that's my understanding in these two, but uh, yeah. however, I need more research about it. Yes. Uh, also, I think that the future heading that way. Yes, yes. And, and obviously for organizations like w- with technology, there is this... Um, I guess this attraction to jump into a new technology without maybe having the foundations in place, um, you know, that they might've seen another organization and a, a competitor implement technology and, and they go all of a sudden are like, well, we need to implement that because it's working for them. It's got to work for us, yeah. but maybe they don't have the culture in place. Maybe they don't have the, the, the right leadership in place. Maybe they don't have the right, um, whatever it might be. Um, I guess what, what um how should organizations i guess uh tread the future carefully so that they're not jumping into things um prematurely before they've established their foundations i I guess one example of that would be an automating a terrible process maybe they've got they've got processes but they haven't improved their processes so they've got terrible processes but they jump at automation that that they automate these terrible process and that and they just go in the wrong direction quicker so yeah what are your thoughts around that okay with the right uh, study and analysis uh to that process or your processes you can identify exactly which process that you can it you have to automate so you f- you look for the end result and what that process can do for you mm. uh, some of the companies yeah understand that they only need to uh, get what's trending these days and just implement them uh, i think that i'm not saying that it's completely wrong however you need to study your steps before you take them, taking them. And uh, 
there is something I usually, every time I say it, um, people get surprised. I don't believe in best practices because whatever you work for you, it, it might not work for me. However, I might take whatever the, this best practice and customize it to my need, and then I can implement it. Yes, yes, that's great. And now um, for those that are listening that, you know, they've been hearing us talk about business process management and, and I guess a, a little bit of value, what, what can BPM bring to an organization? Um, what, what are some things you need to consider, like bringing people on board? How do you get buy-in, sponsorship? We've been talking about like a number of different topics, but for someone that, you know, maybe they're, they're relatively new to business process management, they're um, still learning about it, where would you advise or direct them or encourage them to go? Obviously, there, there are many things out there. There are conferences, there are podcasts, there are books, there are uh, uh, meetup groups, there are, um, there's the internet, but sometimes the internet can be quite overwhelming with all of the information. Who's, who's telling the truth or, or what can I, we, like, um, who's got the right information for our current scenario? So where would you encourage that person to go um, that's learning about BPM? Okay, um, I'm, I'm not just saying read books or uh, take trainings only because everybody know that. However, uh, usually for me uh, personally, I find conferences is really, uh, it can give you value because uh, you can choose exactly what you want to learn mm -hmm. and you don't learn it from a book or uh, like someone saying or thinking that it might be right but you, you hear it and you understand it from people who went through what you have, when, what you are going to go through anyway. Yes. So yes. I think get from other experienced people. Uh, also another way it's listening to you, Daniel. So I think <laughs> it's, it, it, yeah, exactly. Because you have met our interviewed a really uh, pioneers people and they, gave us, I actually, me personally, a lot of information that it's made me change my way of thinking and um, to the way of business process uh, management, uh, our improvement uh, to be specific, yeah. Yes. Oh, that's great to hear, Ryan. Well, thanks. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. I think, you know, the, the goal of this um, uh, podcast series, similar to what you were saying about the conferences, is that I'm trying to sit down with people that, you know, are, are currently working within organizations, currently facing different challenges and hurdles and problems. Um, because I think that's, you know, it, it there's such, it, it's so powerful when you can learn from someone that is currently going through or already has been through what you're about to go through. And, you know, we've had consultants on, on the, in the series, we've had um, people like yourself that are working internally at organizations. We've also had um, academics and researchers and, and people like that. So I think that that broad spectrum, understanding all these different perspectives, um, it, it allows you to, I guess, uh, pull out the gold that, that you resonate with. And then that sparks um, conversations inside of your head, but also conversations with other people as well. So, um, but I just want to thank you, Ryan, for sitting down with me um, today for this interview. Uh, it's, I've been learning a lot and I'm sure our audience is going to learn a lot um, from your, your experiences and what you've been through. So I just want to thank you for sitting down with me and sharing your knowledge with us today. I thank you very much for having me. Thank you.